I know it seems like the world may be burning down. No one really cares about Joe Biden. And even though a lot of political news is happening, everybody's glued to their TV screens about the pandemic. But I still thought it's important to at least keep up a little bit on what's supposed to be a major election. As it turns out, Tucker Carlson insists Joe Biden will not be the Democratic nominee. Here's who he predicts will assume the mantle. Well, let's not play any clickbait here on the Tim Cast show. It's going to be Andrew Cuomo, right? I think it is. Anyway, we'll read what he has to say, but come on, Daily Caller. I hate it when they do that. Just tell us. You know, I don't, I don't like playing those games. But uh, let's see what Tucker Carlson has to say. I completely agree with Tucker Carlson, but hey, Joe Biden, he's trying. That's right. Joe Biden is desperately trying to latch on to progressives who don't like him and never will. And the Democratic Party is going to lose. Look, man. Now is no time. There have been a lot of articles talking about the potential for the elections being postponed. Well, the primaries already are. A general election? I honestly have no idea. But Joe Biden, what does he do? What if he just dropped out? I don't know. People are trying to ship, as they're saying, ship Andrew Cuomo. Well, let's read this story. The caller says, Fox News host Tucker Carlson predicted that former Vice President Joe Biden will not be the Democratic nominee that ends up facing President Donald Trump in November. After a slow start in the early primaries, Biden won South Carolina overwhelmingly in late February, and this we know. Carlson, however, speculated Friday on Charlie LaDuff's podcast, No BS News Hour, that Democrats would find a way to remove the in decline Biden and replace him with a stronger candidate. Speaking of the coming reorder of our politics due to the coronavirus pandemic, Carlson said, I am utterly convinced and would bet money that Joe Biden will not be the Democratic nominee on election day. I just don't believe that. I really don't. Neither do I. What did you say? Asked a clearly surprised Leduff. I sincerely and totally believe that Joe Biden will not be the Democratic nominee on election day. I don't believe that. How does that math work? Carlson said, well, the math doesn't work, but it's not about math. It's about will. So the Democratic Party is intent on taking power, period, period. And they mean it. And they're willing to do kind of whatever they think works. I mean, that's demonstrable. Stating that Biden is not prepared and can't beat Trump or lead the country, Carlson noted his mental decline. He should be working. He shouldn't be working still. I'm not being mean. I know him. I've always liked him, but that's true. And so those are two trains traveling toward each other at high speed, two competing imperatives. We've got to win, but we've got a guy who can't win. Therefore, they're going to replace him. This is not the guy I've known. And you can ask anybody who knows him or has watched him, Carlson continued, that's not him. He's a completely different person and he's in decline and I feel bad about it. That'll be me someday. And I hope somebody loves me enough not to let me run for president. Then Carlson speculated on Biden's likely replacement. If I had to bet, I would think Andrew Cuomo would be the most likely to replace Biden. He said before a discussion about the 1968 Democratic Convention, when former Vice President Hubert Humphrey won the nomination despite not winning any of the state primary elections. Now, Joe Biden doesn't seem to get it. Biden, you cannot win over people who hate you. They're not part of the same party. They don't agree with you on anything, and you're just not going to win. This, to me, is an absurd, false reality. I don't know who's feeding Biden this BS. I guess he's going through the motions because he has to, but Trump is going to win, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Now, okay, maybe Andrew Cuomo goes, enters the race. Maybe Cuomo wins because right now on TV, what do we see? Trump and Andrew Cuomo. Biden is not even a part of this equation, but he's trying. Biden mounts behind the scenes mission to win over where he progresses. I love this because it's going to be really great when he sees how you can't. You can't win over these people, woke authoritarian leftists. They'll never go for Biden. They hate him. Joe Biden's campaign is mounting an aggressive behind the scenes effort to address the biggest weakness of his candidacy, a lack of enthusiasm among the liberal base, particularly young voter. Don't call them liberals, man. These people are loony. Since his landslide victories earlier this month, Biden's advisors have engaged in talks with a range of top progressive groups, including some that endorsed his chief rival, Bernie Sanders, according to multiple sources familiar with the the conversations. The outreach to left-wing organizations and individuals, representing causes from climate change and immigration rights to gun control, and mobilizing underserved black and brown communities communities is focused on young activists. Broadly speaking, they viewed Biden as one of the least inspiring candidates in the sprawling Democratic primary field. Bravo. What, what makes these people think they can win, that, win them over? It's a get woke, go broke. You know what happens in the movies? Yeah, come on. It doesn't work. 
I don't normally do these promo spots, but because everything's kind of gotten unpredictable and bad economically, I'm giving a shout out to readymadecoffee.com. I know it's not the most pressing thing, but if you really want freeze-dried 20, uh, coffee that can last you for 25 years, they come in these bins. My understanding is they're fully stocked and ready to ship. So if you're interested in coffee, you can go to readymadecoffee.com. Link is in the, in the description below. Instead of doing the normal YouTube commercials, which don't seem to be happening anymore because everything's being demonetized, allow me to, to uh, push some coffee on you. If you want to support the channel, this is one way you can do it. Check it out. Franklin's Finest. It comes with 720 servings. They say it lasts 25 years. And uh, that's me doing a commercial, which I rarely do. But let's go back to talking about Joe Biden trying to win over a crowd that absolutely hates him. Have you ever seen any of these movies where they get woke, change a character, and then people don't like it, and then the movies don't work? It's because you're trying to sell a product to people who don't have money. It's the easiest way to put it. The people who pretend to be woke and, and talk about these issues that, you know, Bernie, that, that, you know, Bernie Sanders might tout, they don't, they don't actually care. It's why even Bernie Sanders couldn't get the youth vote. They love to go on TV and claim they're all about this stuff, and then they don't show up to the polls. This means one thing. Biden can't win, period. Uh, you know, if, if, if Bernie Sanders is going to have enthusiastic support and can't get the vote, why would Biden when they absolutely hate the guy? Now, old people are going to vote for Biden, that's for sure. Politico says it's a delicate dance for both sides. For one, Sanders is still in the race. Oh, come on, not really. Plus, the progressives recognize that their time and leverage to influence Biden is limited since he's all but wrapped up the nomination. Still, Biden needs to fix his enthusiasm deficit. That's one way to put it which was partly masked by his wins this month. And it's far from certain that ant antipathy toward President Donald Trump alone will do the job. The activists are seeking commitments from the Biden campaign on their issues, knowing that any headway is likely to be on the margins. Biden, for instance, will never come close to Sanders on policies like Medicare for all. It's a distinction let down for them after coming tantalizingly close to getting Sanders as the nominee. To win the nomination now, Sanders would need to win more than 60% of the remaining delegates, which he won't. And Biden isn't even in the race. So what are we even talking about this at this point? Here's what I really want to get to. I, abs I will point out again, I absolutely love that Tucker Carlson said this, but I don't think even Andrew Cuomo matters at this point. Now, maybe he's their last ditch effort, but it seems like the world is on fire. Did you see my earlier segments? The military is now engaging in like liaison with civilian authorities. What do you even call that? I don't know. There's so much more we have to worry about. I don't even understand why Biden is talking about this stuff. It seems like politicking as usual is a waste of our time at current, in, in, at current present. So what if Biden wants to implement some kind of policy? The only debate that should be happening right now on policy should be the policies that protect us from the coronavirus, bring our economy back, and just generally keep people safe. You want to talk about Medicare for all? Now is not the time. Oh, they'll argue it is, but no, it isn't. Do you know that the U.S. mortality rate for the coronavirus is actually relatively low compared to the rest of the world? Man, it may just be that privatized healthcare does work. I'm not saying I know for sure it does. There's a lot of reasons why the mortality rate may be lower here, but it's entirely possible that what we have is some weird hybridized system, but perhaps it is just more advanced and better than in other countries. Just because a country has socialized medicine doesn't mean you're guaranteed to get good care. You go to Canada, they don't have a lot of the technology we do. So anyway, I digress. I don't want to talk about healthcare. The point is, what can Joe Biden really talk about right now? The American people generally approve of what Donald Trump is doing. So even if Andrew Cuomo was the last ditch effort, it would be a waste of time and effort, and it would waste a potential candidate for 2024. The reality is the Democrats are going through the motions, in my opinion. They have, they're stricken with anxiety. They've been saying it nonstop. People are pointing out that Biden won't even, Biden can't even talk straight anymore. He's getting worse and he's exponentially getting worse. Have you seen these videos of Biden lately? It's like every day he's like a, like 5% worse than he was the day before. He's in decline, but he's in decline faster and faster. It's an exponentially worsening situation. What does this mean for November? Try and imagine it. I can't. I have no idea what to expect. They have nothing. There is literally nothing left for the Democrats to say or do. Donald Trump has basically won. And if we get through this pandemic and we get through it well, Trump is guaranteed re-election. Now, as I mentioned several times, we're facing a potential quarantine for Trump. I don't know what he's going to announce, but he may quarantine three states or at least New York City or parts of these states. That may be wildly unpopular. It may hurt him in the long run. But 
most of the country might actually like that. And to be honest, was New York really going to vote for Trump in the first place? Probably not. Neither was New Jersey or Connecticut. In which case, most of the country might actually support quarantining this hotspot to protect the rest of the country. In the end, if Joe Biden can't talk about anything, he certainly won't be the nominee. And if he is, it'll be going through the motions for no reason. There were a lot of reasons why I thought Donald Trump was going to sweep with like 500 electoral votes. At first, it was because Joe Biden was nothing. He's useless. And it was because the economy was doing well. But now I think it's because Biden is useless. But this serious crisis, Americans are turning to Trump and they're liking what he's saying. Not, not all of it. His favorability is still, you know, people think he's kind of a dick. But they appreciate that he's getting the job done. And quarantining New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, parts of it might make Americans pretty happy. I guess we'll see. I got one more segment coming up for you in a few minutes, and I will see you all shortly.